This tutorial looks at energy in chemical reactions and specifically about what are called exothermic and endothermic reactions. At foundation level you need to know the definition of an exothermic reaction and an endothermic reaction and recognize that exothermic reactions tend to involve a rise in temperature and endothermic reactions drops in temperature but also have to recall that bond making is exothermic and bond breaking is endothermic and how this is related to how a reaction is overall endothermic or exothermic. So exothermic reactions are one in which energy is transferred into the surroundings. In other words, it releases energy to the surroundings and that makes the temperature rise generally. Whereas endothermic reactions are ones where energy is taken in from the surroundings. Uh, in other words, the chemicals absorb energy from the surroundings and the temperature of the surroundings tends to fall. Chemical reactions usually involve breaking bonds and making new bonds. Breaking bonds requires energy and is therefore an endothermic process, whereas making new bonds releases energy and is exothermic. Whether a reaction is overall exothermic or endothermic depends on whether more energy is released in making new bonds than is required to break the existing ones, in which case it would be exothermic, or whether more energy is required to break the bonds than is released in making new ones, in which case it would be endothermic. Now, the remainder of this tutorial is off syllabus, but hopefully will help you to understand this idea of breaking and making bonds. We could look at a chemical reaction, for example this one where methane is burned in oxygen to make carbon dioxide and water. And when we draw out each of the chemical compounds, we can see that they have bonds within them. These are displayed formulas showing all the atoms and all the bonds. Now in order for this reaction to take place, what we'd have to do is to break these four carbon-hydrogen bonds in the methane molecule, and we'd also have to break these two oxygen-oxygen bonds in the oxygen gas to make individual atoms, which can then be recombined, making new bonds, these carbon-oxygen bonds and these hydrogen-oxygen bonds here, in order to make the products. Breaking and making each kind of bond requires different amounts of energy, which are measured in kilojoules. The carbon-hydrogen bonds, which are in this methane molecule, uh, have an energy of 413 kilojoules. So to break four of these would take four lots of 413, or 1,652 kilojoules. Similarly, to break these two oxygen-oxygen bonds will require 498 each, which is 996. So before we even start, we've got to supply 1652 and 996 kilojoules in order to break all of those atoms apart. But once the atoms are apart, they can then recombine and make new bonds. New oxygen-carbon bonds give out 805 kilojoules each, which is 1610 kilojoules. And new oxygen-hydrogen bonds give out 464 kilojoules each, making 1856 kilojoules. So even though energy is required to break the existing bonds, quite a large amount of energy is given out, uh, making the new ones. When we quantify this, we can see that the amount of energy required to break the existing bonds is 2,648 kilojoules, but 3,466 kilojoules of energy are given out when the new bonds are made, which is more. Overall, then, this reaction would be exothermic, by uh, 818 kilojoules because more energy is given out making the new bonds than is required to break the existing bonds. So there is a relationship here between breaking and making bonds and whether a reaction is exothermic or endothermic but all you'll need to remember is that an exothermic reaction gives out energy and therefore the temperature rises. Endothermic reaction requires energy therefore the temperature tends to drop and also that bond making is exothermic, whereas bond breaking is endothermic.